Okay, should we get started? I know we have some people still settling in. Welcome everyone. So thanks so much for joining us um, for this 5 p.m. work session on April 25th, 2023. <clears throat> um, yeah, I saw her too. She's coming. Yeah. Welcome, and um, please let the record reflect that all council members are present, um, with the exception of council, uh, Vice Chair Richie, who I think is on his way. And I believe Council Member Nadolski is online. Do you want to say hello, Ben? Hello. Thanks for accommodating me. Oh, you bet. Thank you for joining us. And thanks to all of these um, wonderful staff members and guests. Um, consultants and Marshall White Advisory Committee members that are here. That's really wonderful to see you all. First up, it looks like on our agenda, we are going to have a present presentation um, Oh, by Brent Tippett from the CBO, Mayor Brown, Director of Management Services, Monica Cap, Division Manager of Management Services, Ed Bridge, Recreation Manager and Public Services. Um, she's next on, um, she's down the list a little oh, bit. Come on. Oh, okay. So is everybody coming at once? No, no. So, Chair. <laughs> so who who would you like Ch me to introduce? Chair, if, if, <laughs> if you want, I'll, I'll, get, you things, can, okay. I'll get things going and thank I'll get you. Yeah, introductions you going. You want. Yeah. So thank, thank you. you so much. Sorry for any confusion. Um, we are going to go over the all the information we have on the Marshall White Center tonight. And as... Uh, if we go forward one more slide, this will show kind of the presentation outline of how we will be doing that. Let's see, is this clicker not working? Okay. No worries. We'll hold off just a second. And and while we advance to the next slide here in just a second, th there it is. Thank you. Um, I just want to take a minute and recognize the Marshall White Committee. Um, can you introduce yourself? Because oh. I don't think I... Introduce yeah, that, you. I'm so sorry. Yeah, no worries. I, I am. I'm Justin Anderson. I am the city engineer and the public services deputy director. Um, and so, yep, uh, we've got um, just to just take a second and thank the Marshall White Committee for all the work and, and they've put into this. I'd also like to thank the public. I'd also like to thank the public and all of their involvement in getting to this point. Um, and also I'd like to thank the staff hours, the team that the staff, the administration's put together to get to this point and, and doing that, especially Ed Bridge, who's, who's done a lot of work along the way. So I really appreciate all the, the effort that's gone forward with that, with all these different groups. Um, the presentation's gonna go forward in this order. We're gonna first have an overview of, des of design by Brent Tippetts, who's the architect of this project. And then I'm going to review the bid process. And then we'll have a funding review that will be done by Lisa Stout, who's the city comptroller. Then we'll review the bonding and the, the dates of bonding. And that'll be done by Laura Lewis, um, who do, has done quite a bit of work in, in overseeing our bond, our bond council. And then we'll, Ed Bridge will talk to us last. He'll go over the proposed construction schedule. And then he will also talk to us about the program adjustments. So Brent, with that, I'm gonna turn the time over to you. Good evening, happy to be with you and happy to be to this phase of the project. It's been a, uh, a fairly lengthy process and we've met with the public, we've met with staff, we've met with the committee on multiple occasions and uh, we've, been working through the design, we've got through the design, and now we are, have actually bid the project out, which we'll present all to you tonight. I'm just going to do a quick overview. We have been in front of you before, uh, and but I'll just try to hit upon kind of the major elements and uh, as an introduction to the rest of the information that you received tonight. So this is an exterior rendering uh, from the corner off of 28th and Lincoln Avenue of what the facility will look like. Uh, we're proud of it. Uh, we think that it represents uh, the community, kind of the reflection of the past, but also a look into the future when we think about the Marshall White facility. Uh, this is another exterior view from the east looking towards the west and uh, from the soccer field area. That upper glass portion that you see there is actually a view from the running track 
uh, that will circulate around in that area. Uh, this is the site. You can see there in green is a soccer uh, field area. The parking is in front of the building and the, the facility uh, pushed a little bit further to the north from where it currently sits and then staff parking will be behind uh, in a secure area there. And we are preserving the existing outdoor basketball court. Uh, so that will stay in place, but the majority of the rest of the site will be totally redeveloped and improved upon. Uh, this is a, the main floor plan. And I, if you, can you see my mouse if I move it? No, okay, never mind. Can you can move next slide. Okay, perfect, thank you. So this is the entrance into the facility and the vestibule where you come in, it'll be automatic sliding doors. Off to the left is the control counter for those people coming into the facility. Uh, and so this is kind of a hard control for those that are uh, going into the recreational component. But you have the ability of going to the right and down this hallway here, which is the community space. And the community space has a large uh, multi-purpose room that is also has a capability uh, through operable partitions to be compartmentalized into three different rooms that could be utilized for classrooms and otherwise. There is a teaching kitchen uh, located here that will function. You'll see an image of that here shortly in a minute. Uh, we also have an art art room that is located here. There is a uh, kiln and storage area associated with that. We have public restrooms in this area. And then we have the Head Start program that is here. So uh, the greens portion represents uh, a synthetic turf field house area indoors. And uh, this can be set up so that it could be accessed off of this community hall but probably for the majority of this time, it will be accessed from the recreation side and be utilized in there. But it has a capability for parents that are coming in to watch their uh, children participate in different athletic activities that they could actually enter from the community and not go through the control point. Similarly, the gymnasium is set up that same way so that it could be operated uh, for uh, the recreation uh, sports side but there are roll-up doors here that you'll see uh, that allows the community space to flow into that gymnasium and take it, use it. Over to uh, the left-hand side, there's a child care area for those using the facility. Uh, this is short-time child care. There's some uh, administrative offices for staff uh, at the facility. You come through that control and you go into a locker area, which is primarily uh, family cabana type change rooms. And then there are traditional men's and women's change rooms as well. But we have both options available. The pool area, which is uh, has three different zones of activity that take place in there. This is a very shallow water from a zero beach entrance to maybe 12 inches of depth in this portion that steps down into about three and a half feet of water in an activity program pool area that will is set up for learn to swim programs, utilized for uh, recreational activities such as basketball, volleyball, uh, and also for water aerobics. This area is a 25 yard uh, free lane uh, lap pool area. It'll be used for lap swimming. It'll also be able to be utilized for uh, water aerobics classes. Uh, it will have a depth of water from up four and a half feet down to uh, about six feet of depth in, uh, excuse me, about seven feet of depth in that area there. These are support spaces for the pool area uh, located in here. So let me just walk you through. This is an image uh, in the front lobby as you come in. The control point uh, is right here. Here's the reception desk as you come in. There is a lounge area for those waiting for people to uh, come out of the locker room area or uh, so forth. And then behind that control point are the stairs that go to the mezzanine, which we'll show you some more information on here in a moment. This is a view looking down the community hallway uh, towards the east and the soccer fields. 
And uh, we've intentionally tried to make it so it's very transparent. The track uh, is on the upper left here. So people will be running along there and be able to have visibility into there. These doors that you see here are actually roll up doors that will allow you to uh, the community space to expand into the gymnasium. On to the right is actually that multi-purpose area with the large, uh, large support space there. And these are also roll up doors. So again, the gymnasium, the hallway, the multi-purpose room can all be one space. This is a view in the multi-purpose uh, room. Uh, one end is set up so that there'd be projection capabilities, AV technology for classes, presentations, and those types of things that would be held there. Uh, this is another view looking the opposite direction in that multi-purpose room towards the uh, teaching kitchen. And this is kind of the configuration that has been set up for that. There would be, uh, the instructor would be behind the counter here teaching uh, that we have uh, TV monitors which allow people to watch uh, what from above what the uh, chef may be preparing and what doing and working in there. Here's a view of the gymnasium looking back towards that multi-purpose area in that community space uh, with a running and jogging track up above. Very multi-functional. Uh, this is a view of the in the pool area and looking uh, the upper windows that you see there are actually from the fitness mezzanine where there'll be uh, fitness cardio equipment and be able to have views looking down into the pool. Uh, this kind of shows those three different zones with the lap area here in the foreground, that uh, program pool area, and then the shallower area on the far end. And then the lower windows, those are looking into that locker lounge area where those lockers are. This is a view of the plan of the mezzanine. Uh, and you can see the activities in here. We do have the fitness equipment that would be located, the walking jogging track that circulates around the gymnasium in the field house area, the views down into the lower area. And then we have an exercise fitness studio it's an isolated room here, and this is actually a view of that room uh, and what it would be uh, configured as and set up. Um, and this is a view looking down the fitness area and off to the running track on the right. In the very back of the image, it's kind of hard to tell, but we have the boxing uh, area dedicated back there with a the ring and training equipment for boxing. So. That's pretty much the presentation on the uh, uh, on the presentation of the the design. So, that's um, any questions from anybody? Yeah, please. Uh, you used the word teaching kitchen. <clears throat> um, it, does it double duty as a real kitchen too? So or it, <clears throat> let's just say we have to be a little bit careful about terminology when we talk about kitchens in a public space, but. Okay. It, it has a capability of being able to be utilized. It does have a cooking surface in it. It has refrigerators, a three compartment sink. Uh, there's a pantry in there. Uh, but we have, we, we are not classified as a full on commercial kitchen. So we're being very careful not to use those kinds of, that type of terminology. Well, that, that's what I wondered. Um, you know, I remember when we toured it a couple of years ago, you know, that was, there was a lot of discussion around the kitchen, how it was kind of small and they would, you know, some of the people that were uh, users of that facility desired that it would be a little bigger so that if they did want to rent it out for like a reunion or something or any number of kinds of events like that, that, that it would actually service as a place where they could as a uh, as them. a serving kitchen, it would function very well for it. It's got all the capabilities. It's actually bigger than most venues of this size would have available to them. But the intent is that you don't come here and cook the food. Bringing in food and using it as a serving kitchen will function just fine. Okay, I'm, I think I understand. Uh, the other issue, well, not an issue, it's just a question about the... Uh, uh, the grassy area, the, the artificial grass. Yes. Um, can you help? I, I know you, you go out to 
Ben Lomond's football field, and it's pretty thick stuff with that rubbery stuff mixed in there with it. I assume it's not going to be that. As well, actually, it will have what you're referring to is typically different, is proprietary to different manufacturers, but uh, there's a combination of traditionally rubber and sand mm. that will be in there. And yes, it will have those because that provides the best surface that uh, duplicates uh, natural turf. You don't so anticipate forth. it getting hot because there's not sun shining on it. This one won't be an issue from that standpoint. Okay. Uh, that's the biggest concern with those outdoor fields is because it do get hot. Okay. Mine um, also was just made aware that um, Vice Chair Ritchie is on online, an online meeting too. So I don't know if Ben or Ken, if you have any questions online. None for me. Thank you. Thanks, no Done for me as well. Thank you. Any others here? <laughs> um, I was just curious. I mean, um, it's not easy for me to identify um, specifics because I'm trying to remember, you know, the different stages I've seen the design. Do you recall any major changes that happened between the last time we talked and this version? Maybe the um, drop-in daycare. I can't remember if that was in that version or not, but is there anything else that you... Think of? You know, Mark Johnson and I are, are getting up in years, and we got to be. We, we oftentimes <laughs> well, can't remember what we had for lunch yesterday. Uh, actually, I was thinking about that, and I was trying to remember from yes. the last time we presented to now. I do not think there's been very many yes. changes at all. I think it should look very familiar to you. Yeah, I hope it does. So. Oh yeah, absolutely. I just was. I was just trying to remember. Um, I remember us talking about the drop-in daycare, and I couldn't remember. It's not there. Nice. Well. Oh, did you have a question? Yeah, I'm sorry because oh, I was no. standing up to get my food and I don't know if I missed this. Was there still a space for boxing in there? Yes, there okay. is. Okay. And I'll just, I could quickly. Thank you. It, it, it's not well covered in this view, but it's in the very far end oh, here. Oh, okay. And it's on the upper level. There it is. Yeah, the plan view. Yeah. Shows it right there. The floor plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here we go. This yellow area is all dedicated to boxing here, and the white area is it actually the ring? So. Thank you. Thank I, you. I had one other question I forgot to ask. When we toured it, there were some program areas in the basement. Is that still going to maintain? Are you still going to have some rooms down there for whatever reason that they use them? Or you're talking about the existing facility? Uh -huh. So. Uh, We've tried to be very multifunctional with this building. It is twice the size of what you currently have at the facility. Uh, the classrooms and so forth, we feel like we've adequately provided spaces for those, but they are more of a multifunctional use than they are a dedicated use, if you will. And I think the spaces are actually larger and uh, will be more flexible for their facility. But nothing in the basement. Uh, is, is that, that was really kind of what... Uh, Nothing below ground level, Here, other than utility in this facility. Stuff. No, yeah. in the new facility, no, it's all on grade. Okay, thanks. Let's clarify that. Thanks, and, and thank you for the opportunity to be involved in this project. It's it's actually a, a very significant project to your community. It's a significant project to us. So thank you. Well, we're excited about it. Next, awesome. Well, we'll go to the next um, item, which is the the bid process review to. To this point, so Ogden City went out for a, what's called an RFQ, a request for qualifications. We received um, five submittals when we did that. However, going through that process, we determined that we had four of them that were met the qualifications of being having the expertise, the capacity, and and so forth to perform this work. Of those four, we received bids from all four. The low bid was from a company called BHI or BH Incorporated, um, and their bid was $28,375,000 for the items that were within that bid. So the bids ranged from the low bid all the way to the high bid, which was $36 million. The, um, so in reviewing all of the, the costs, we have some architectural and engineering costs of 1.7 million. We have some art installation of 250,000. And then we have um, an item which is for the IT um, to be able to go in and to be able to get cameras and, and everything to 
that they need to be able to perform the capacity of this building to its full techn technological capabilities. And then we also have an item for fixtures, furnishings, and equipment, mm -hmm. and landscaping. And we estimate those to be $4 million. Yeah, I was going to ask more about that, you know, um, about the different equipment and the technology from things like that and all the furniture. So that's included in the yeah. that, FFE? That's in, yes, that's in that um, item. So we come to what we propose a total cost of approximately 34325000 When you talk about art, what type of art? Yeah. Like the, like the, the, Silhouettes of runners on the sides of the walls. Is that what you're talking about? Or is this no, and in fact, Marshall Ed, White art? I'll probably have Ed come and talk to that real quick. So the the, the art committee is actually working on an art piece for this um, that, that hopefully will also represent um, Marshall White and kind of his legacy and, and what took place there too. And so, yeah, it's that we've tasked the, the arts committee to come up with some, some stuff, but included in that is also um, those designs too. So it kind of encompasses all of it. Yeah, you'll be there soon enough, Ed, anyway. So if you're soon enough, soon enough. So if there's no other questions. We'll go to the next, which Lisa Stout's going to talk about our funding route. Right. I think you can adjust it on the side. That's okay. My feet do touch the ground. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so now the fun part, how do we pay for this? Um, the council has been assembling funding for the last few years. You'll, oh, I have the advancer. Sorry. So the total cost was $34 million. Um, if you'll notice, this is $29 million. Any, uh, we're still hoping for some donations. Um, we don't know what that is yet. The difference between what's here and the cost is about $5 million. If those donations don't happen, increasing the bond is, is something we'll have to look at. Um, but we, we've received a $150,000 grant from the state of Utah uh, that we're using. Uh, we've received a couple of ramp grants uh, one for the water feature, and then just a major ramp grant that will help with, with the construction. Uh, we're using a total of $5.6 million in ARPA funds, and then the city investment of $5 million. So that includes the annual million you've put aside for the last few years, and the one that will happen in fiscal year 24 that will come to you with the mayor's budget next year. And then the difference will be covered by bonding and um, fundraising. Um, and Lara is going to talk more about the bond, the bonding. Um, but we we've kind of looked at how much it's going to cost to pay these bonds. Again, there's some guesswork in what they're finally going to be, but we're estimating between 1.4 and 1.6 million dollars a year. That's a 30-year bond, and that will come from the BDO revenue. We would propose that we change the BDO lease revenue ordinance to indicate that that debt comes from here. So can I just ask one question? Correct. Yes. And I'm thinking about this like buying a car. So if, if that's wrong, let me know. A little more expensive. I get that. <laughs> um, maybe. Is the, is the $29 million, is that kind of where we wanted to stay? And now we're hoping for five million. That's the, because that that's was kind of our max, or are we just comfortable think, saying we think we can still get donations? So, so that's why we left it at twenty nine. So we know we were going for donations. We've had some major donors reach out to us. It's not finalized, so we really can't talk about it. We don't know if it'll be five million. Okay. Could be three million. Could be two million. Could be ten million. But the swing number is always been how much we bond for and we're trying to drive that down as much as we can so that we're taking as little as we as we possibly can out of the bdo lease revenue money for the next 20 or 30 years mm -hmm. if that makes sense yep. okay i have a little question too but the I, price is 
34, yep. whatever. And change. Million. Um, the bid, uh, how firm is the bid? I mean, I know that we've been talking about fluctuating costs of steel and concrete and labor and stuff being drastically different from, you know, over time. Um, do Is this bid pretty firm or are so, they? Yeah, so we had them, they qualified their bid and as part of the bidding process, they, they hold those pricing for 60 days. And so that we want to be able to, to get into a contract with them. And so part of that is what's gonna be discussed here involves the, the city council and, and moving forward if that's what we choose to do. But though that pricing will be hold, held for 60 days and to be able to get a contract with this contractor. Okay, thanks. Good chair, I have a question. Go ahead. Thanks. I should ask it before, but it was something Justin said earlier about um, it made me think of it. Were were there batting cages included in the turf area or drop down batting cages? Yeah, yes, there will be. There'll, there'll be netting um, that will will outline that. Okay, thanks. Sixty days from when we receive their bid. From when we open their bid, we opened bids last Friday, so okay. April twenty first. I just wanted to know where we were in that process. Okay, at Thanks. three p.m. So we have yeah. until sixty days from that time. Perfect. You ready for me? Yep. <clears throat> this is a great day for me, and I'm sure it's even a better day for you because you've been talking about Marshall White for, I think, since before I had gray hair. That's a long time ago. <clears throat> Just ask my kids. Um, so as we uh, prepare for the financing element of this, uh, the, the deadline that you have in order to execute that contract was made amply clear to me with a, we will have a way to get the financing done before then, won't we? <laughs> and the answer is yes, it's tight. Um, but it's part of what uh, necessitated a meeting this evening is so that we could get on that timeline um, educate you on all of the elements uh, surrounding the financing so that you're prepared to um, uh, take action on the formal parameters resolution at your next um, regular meeting and then schedule a public hearing. <clears throat> While that's going on, we're in the process of getting in front of rating agencies and, and that kind of thing so that we'll be ready to price the bonds uh, prior to you needing to execute that contract. <clears throat> the current intent from a timing perspective is to be able to close on the bonds prior to you needing to execute that contract. Um, if, you know, <clears throat> let's say the market goes to, you know, hell in a handbasket on a day, we, <clears throat> we do have a little bit of wiggle room um, because as long as we are priced, um, uh, I and bond council would be comfortable that you could execute the contract. Um, <clears throat> but we are currently scheduled to have it priced and closed before you need to execute that contract. But it is a it is a tight timeline. Um, <clears throat> so the parameters resolution that will be uh, placed in front of you will have a maximum par amount of thirty one million dollars. And you may say to me, well, Lara, don't didn't you see those numbers? <laughs> we only need seventeen point seven. Um, <clears throat> um, and that comes with um, an, an asterisk of you don't know where that other 5 million is gonna come from, right? So uh, there's, uh, I always put in um, some cushion. In this case, I have put in extra cushion <clears throat> in case it's needed. Uh, and then in addition to that, <clears throat> there's another small project. Uh, you need to do some work at the uh, parking structure at, at the junction. And <clears throat> it makes sense time timing wise to build that. It's about $2 million into this transaction as well. Now, the last draft I was able to pull of the, thank you, of the um, parameters resolution that I had hadn't been corrected for um, the junction parking structure. I believe that's happened. We had a computer issue at my office that has taken two days to resolve, but it just got resolved as I was driving up here. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, but my understanding is that, that that correction has been made in the parameters resolution. It still needs to get dropped into uh, some of the other, uh, uh, you know, supporting documents, the indenture and that kind of thing. 
So what you'll be asked to uh, approve, the parameters will be set a, a not to exceed 31 million. Again, that gives you a lot of headroom. It does not bind you to bond for $31 million. Um, <clears throat> Uh, that action will be taken um, upon the bond sale and a document that will be executed called a bond purchase agreement. Designated officers that I'll talk about in a minute will give the approval of that document so long as we stay within these parameters. So think of this as the outside limit, the edges of the track there. There's my good analogy. Um, <clears throat> uh, the maximum uh, time that you can mature those bonds over is 40 years. Again, the finance plan does not um, currently anticipate that because we're anticipating you'll get the donations and stay within the plan that uh, you know Lisa had talked about. But let's say you only get four million and you've got an extra million. Well, maybe instead of 30 years, I wanna go 31 because that will fit within your budget. Does that make sense? So that's why the outside of 40 years, a discount is how <clears throat> bonds are sold. Sometimes at a discount, sometimes at a premium. We have to state the maximum discount is 3%. So they would, uh, the uh, the sale could be at 97 cents on the dollar. Chances are it'll be closer to um, 100 cents on the dollar all in. And an interest rate not to exceed 6%. Um, Ten-year treasuries came down yesterday. I haven't uh, had a chance to follow uh, the, the market much today. Generally, municipal bonds will follow treasuries. They don't follow them in lockstep, you know, the day of. But, um, uh, you know, again, high general thing, the market uh, seems to be thinking that the feds are going to slow their rate increases <clears throat> and that uh, typically will bode well for, um, for the municipal market. Uh, and and uh, I fully expect it will be below um, 6%. The designated officer. So the process going forward, will be <clears throat> the council will adopt in a regular council meeting this parameters resolution. And <clears throat> uh, then you will set and hold a public hearing, I believe on May 23rd. That sticks in my head, I don't have that circled. Um, <clears throat> and so those are the other actions that you as a council will have to take. When you adopt the parameters resolution, it will uh, establish what's called um, designated officers. <clears throat> and as long as we stay within the lanes, those designated officers are authorized to give final approval to issue the bonds. <clears throat> it has to be any four of the following six, the mayor or um, his designee, the management service director, the chair and vice chair of the council or their designees, the council's executive director or designee, <clears throat> the treasurer, um, are the designated officers, but there's a specific conclusion that at least two of those designated of the four, I mean, there can be more, <clears throat> have to have a minimum of four, can be a maximum of, everyone wants to come to the pricing party, yay. Um, <clears throat> um, but at least two of the designated officers have to be the chair or vice chair of the council or their designee, so that you are, you know, very, very well represented um, uh, as that decision goes, goes forward. And with that, I think um, I've talked about the project, the public hearing. Um, I'm not sure why. Oh, one other thing. <clears throat> when you issue these sales tax bonds, you have very, very few sales tax bonds outstanding. Um, I want to say half a million, Lisa. Am I in the ballpark of what you have outstanding in sales tax bonds? It's like. Yeah, it's like one year. Yeah, it, it's like not that. much. <laughs> <clears throat> right. So. Um, you do have other projects that you have uh, discussed upcoming, um, you know, later this year, uh, for which you may use uh, sales tax to secure uh, part of those bonds. So it's reasonable to say, well, if we do this, are we still going to be able to do that? <clears throat> the way that it works in, in the bond finance world, um, bonds can be issued on parity with one another. So it's as if you had issued them all at the same time and they all have the same security and then, you know, effectively those bondholders would share in those revenues on a pro rata basis. What we will be um, uh, committing the city to do in the bond documents, you'll maintain um, certain debt service coverage ratios before you issue additional bonds. So you can't control sales tax, right? If these are water bonds, you might enter into a covenant to say, you know, you've got to maintain your rates at one and a quarter coverage. Well, you can't make people shop. Right. So <clears throat> the coverage ratio is typically set higher 
and how it's um, imposed on you, so to speak, is it will limit what additional bonds you could issue in the future if you start to breach that coverage covenant, right? So the coverage covenant we're contemplating is a two times uh, debt service coverage covenant. So what that means is that if you have <clears throat> $10 in revenue, you can bond up to $5 per year, right? That would be your debt service. If $10 is revenue, there's your two times coverage. So we're taking a portion of that with this debt structure, but there is still headroom to do other projects because you have a um, significant amount of sales tax revenue and uh, very little sales tax debt. With that, are there any questions? Laurie, I do have a question. Um, so you're issuing with sales tax revenue bonds. Why is why aren't we doing it through the municipal building authority? So that is an option. <clears throat> um, we're very fortunate in the state of Utah to have several options of how you can finance um, projects. And it gives us a benefit to say, oh, well, we can do this one that way and it'll be better to do this one that way. <laughs> so that is something that was discussed. Um, a uh, building authority transaction for those in the room, the security of a building authority transaction works the closest to how your mortgage works on your home, right? Your home is the security. If you don't pay, the mortgage lender comes in and says, you'll be moving now. <laughs> right? So um, <clears throat> um, that's a similar security under a building authority structure, which again, this is not. If we had done it that way, then that would be the security. You would not be pledging sales tax and therefore the interest rates on the bonds would be a little bit higher. Um, they, uh, you know, they, they, the market doesn't like what's called an an the annual appropriation risk. So if the sales tax, if you choose not to pay, <laughs> they will come marching in through the trustee and say, oh, look here, it says that you will use your sales tax. Do you have sales tax? Oh, look, they do. We're grabbing it. Right. I mean, they they would be first in line, so to speak, along with any other parity bondholders to grab that sales tax as a building authority. If you choose not to pay, they can go, hmm, I guess you'll be moving and we'll take over that facility and sell it for office space or whatever they want to do. So in this particular instance, um, we felt that uh, it made the most sense to get you the lowest interest rate uh, plausible, um, other than if you were to go through the process of having a general obligation election, that would, that would provide a little bit lower interest rate. The risk there <clears throat> is one of timing. So let's assume that everyone in the valley says, yay, we love it, we'd vote for it. Well, the soonest I could get that done, the very soonest, <laughs> you would have the election in November, you'd canvas, blah, blah, blah. The soonest I could issue those bonds would be late next January, maybe early next February. So timing just is the pits to try to do something with the general obligation bond. Good question. Mm -hmm. And um, where are we, you might have already said this, um, where are we paying this from? the bond. Um, the, oh, that's Lisa's Lisa. question. Go ahead. I'm Lisa. Sorry, Lisa. No, no, that's okay. I think I know, but it's fine. yeah. So uh, we have a BDO lease revenue that that sort of dictates what we're going to use BDO lease revenue first. We're proposing that we amend that that ordinance or, um, and include the Marshall White debt, so it would come from BDO lease revenue. I feel like that's a pretty secure source of revenue, at least to cover this this bond for sure. Do we know how much the payment is? We're estimating, and Laura can maybe help me on this. I didn't bring my debt service numbers because oh, I couldn't get to them on my files, but I recall that it's about a million seven. Yeah, that's what I remember. So we were thinking, you know, between um, a million four, a million six, with interest rates going up, it yeah. is probably going to be closer to a million seven, and that was debt service on a thirty-year debt. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Sure, uh, prepay. Sorry. What What are the options to either refinance or pay off those bonds early? Excellent question. <clears throat> um, standard in the municipal market is a ten-year par call. So meaning that without paying a premium, you could pay off whatever balance is left after you've made 10, I mean, after we hit 10 years, you may, I mean, maybe, you know, I think we're just gonna do level, roughly level that service. So you will have made, um, you know, 10, 
million-ish principal payments <clears throat> and the balance that's left after that, we can, we can um, you know, if you have a windfall, if you sell some property, you could pay that down. If rates are lower, we could refinance it. Um, uh, right now, we've been able to, I mean, it's not, you know, you think, oh, it's not much, but anything helps, right? Um, we have typically been able to, if we ask, a lot of people don't ask, and I'm a big question asker, if we can uh, get a nine-year par call, mm -hmm. um, just just to give us another year of flexibility. In the old days, um, we could do what's called an advance refunding, because we know we're in we're in higher interest rates now than we have been in the past 10 years, right? Not everyone's aware of that. Um, sort of over the course of my career, we're in about normal interest rates, right? But we all think, oh, well, what if they go down? Well, if they were to go down two years from now, there was a point in time that we could have done a refunding structure called an advance refunding and still kept them tax exempt. Mm -hmm. But the uh, federal tax laws were changed probably about four-ish, six, four to six years ago, and they don't allow us to do that anymore <laughs> on a tax exempt basis. Um, so that's why I try to push for as aggressive call provision as I can get. I have a question, yep. probably that's for okay. Lisa, though. That's okay. She knew she was probably I know. Getting She's getting her over. steps in the day. You get your she watch off? She likes to move. She likes to move. <laughs> um, something that kind of concerns me, and maybe you can, I, I don't know what you'll say. Um, I, I'm kind of a convert of this idea that BDO or lease revenue ought to be one-time stuff. Yep. And we're eating away at that. We're getting suckered into yep. where are we at? today with this and wonder block and all the things that we've already talked about committing long term are we have we have we bit away half of it or what are we what are we where are we at um so i uh, i had a i have a little projection sheet of course we're in a different environment than we were 6 months ago uh, so interest rates have gone up it would probably be wise to update that but it seems like we were at about 30 or 40 percent with all of them when we ran that before but again let me update those numbers and i can provide that to to janine and when i when i think about the marshall white you know we we were estimating maybe one and a half million in debt um right now you're putting a million dollars aside every year for mm -hmm. marshall white so taking that away and adding the debt um really won't change that point seven yeah a whole lot um Well, I, I guess I maybe don't even know the question to ask other than what can we do to make sure that we do draw a line in the sand on this thing somewhere so that it doesn't, uh, or, or maybe another question uh, is, is there another way to pay for this? Without an uh, increase to taxes, I, I cannot think of another source where we could come up with a million and a half plus a year. Um, BDO has been really stable the last several years, so it feels like a safe place to plan on taking the money for. But I completely agree with you on the one-time money. It, that has been huge for the city, mm -hmm. the amount of projects and, and capital improvements we've been able to do using BDO lease revenue has been huge. Uh, I think probably your strongest way to do that as a council is through the DDO lease revenue ordinance. And then... You know, as a council, I, I don't know if you can have some kind of a, a policy where you as a council do not agree to enter into more debt. I, I just, I just, well, we've kind of relied on administration digging in their heels, but yeah. this is coming from admin. So, yeah. Well, it's also coming from us. I mean, because we wanted to do the project and that's, well, I know we know how to do it. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. That's, that, I just want to make sure we, we talk about mm -hmm. this because I, I think we can. We could very easily, uh, I mean, when anybody has this in their own personal budget, they don't have it long because exactly. it just gets frittered away. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, it's really easy to add this revenue. I mean, this is a really um, desired project and then Wonder Block on top of that and then mm -hmm. what else on top of that. So I, I agree. It does take commitment to not... So I guess my hope is that when leadership, when you guys, when we get this ordinance, and staff that we review it for some of those strongly worded statements that says, hey, you know what, we really value this as one-time money, 
in this case, we kind of see an exception, something along that line. It's a good idea. You know, I think it'd be really good to have that in that ordinance. Very good idea. Thank you. Or like a certain percentage. Because I, I totally get what you're saying. But I think for something like infrastructure like this, to me, it's it's one time money, but it's over a long time. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> because you're like, oh, we need to, if only we could just pay it for it all in cash. <laughs> Amen. Um, Council Member White? Well, and you have to remember it's an asset as well. So it is building, mm -hmm. even though it's over a long time of payment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions? Oh, the last question is, um, oh, it sounds like somebody online, but um, I don't mind um, being a designated officer, but if anybody else is interested, um, please let us know and you can be added to that call too. Will, will you just tell us again the parameters just real quick again? I'm sorry. No, not, to exceed. Oh, hello. not to exceed 31 million, not to exceed 40 years amortization, not to exceed 6% in interest rate. That would include if we have bonds, you know, their price of coupons and yield and whatever. Um, and then a discount of 3%, not to exceed it. That would include the underwriter's discount and any discount um, as the bonds are sold. To your question, I have done it before. It's an interesting experience, especially with Laura. Happy to do it again, <laughs> but I just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah. Well, if you want to do it, you're welcome to do it. Well, and if... Sure. if I mean, if, if yeah, 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 we'll just see what the time is, and then and, we'll and if others you know, want yeah. to listen in, I mean, there's no, yeah. you know, it's not like I say, sorry, you're the third council member, I'm not going to let you on the call. <laughs> and that's you know, so if you want to, <laughs> yes, you, you, one thing, you do need to know though is you have to spend a day on the phone with Laura. To, she needs to teach you this new language that is used. So it doesn't really take a day; just a little while. It took me a long I time. I did it once. <laughs> Uh -huh. Did someone online have a question? I did, Chair. I just wondered if we have a target date for groundbreaking. It looks like that's what's up next on our program. Oh, sorry. Before before we leave on the pricing, we're currently planning on, um, you'd need to be available the afternoon of June 13th and the morning of June 14th. That could move up or back a day. And as you know, you could take, you can participate in a call from anywhere. You can get it on a phone. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay. I, I wanted to start off by just echoing what, what uh, J Justin said that, I mean, to get here at this point, it took a great team effort with, with the, the public, the community, um, the Marshall White Advisory Committee, staff, engineering, Taylor has been phenomenal. Um, BCPO, and so I, I think this has been just a great, great team project with, with everybody um, being involved. And so here's here's our proposed um, schedule with construction. As Justin talked before, that we we asked them when they turned in their bid to hold to hold the price for 60 days. That takes us out to June 20th. Um, we anticipate the center to close June 1st, um, and then start construction the first week of July. And, and that will allow us time to, we, we have some asbestos abatement that we have to take care of and then also get stuff out of there, get the new programs where they're gonna be and get, get all the stuff out of there and, and placed and ready to go for our new, new uh, programs. And so where those programs are going, I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit. So we have some partners and, and we're working with them. So Ben Lohman is, we'll, we'll have the boxing there. Um, Dance will also be at Ben Lohman, Cheer will be at Ben Lohman and Tumbling will, will be at Ben Lohman. The library is going to take, um, we'll have music out of, out of the library. We'll be using the library for that. Arts and crafts, Lego, chess, and ballet. Um, out at Golden Hours, we'll do our adult pottery, our youth pottery, family pottery, um, pottery studio, and Hawaiian dance out of there. Um, some other of our programs, our Mighty Might Basketball will be at Highland Junior High or Mighty Might Soccer. We'll use a, the school district, one of the school district gyms. Our speed and agility will, will be done. We're anticipating out at Liberty Park, our cooking class. Uh, we partnered up with Kitchen Needs, and that's where we'll host our co cooking classes out of. And that's kind of where all the programs will be going, why, why we're closed during construction. And that'll take care of all of them. It's amazing that you have that all figured out already. Yeah, yep, and that, yeah. That was, um, I have a question about the closing of the center. Um, 
<laughs> what will happen with all the equipment or materials that are in the center now? So we're going through that. The stuff that we can reuse, we'll absolutely reuse um, in, in the new center. Some stuff we'll, we'll sell and then then stuff that's not usable, we'll uh, dispose of. We'll go through our proper proper procedures of disposing of it. And then now I brought this up before a little bit about like any actual materials from the building. It are, I mean, sometimes that's like a fundraising opportunity or... Are there any materials from the current building that will be used in the new construction? So, so thanks for bringing that. We did ask them in the bid to hold um, hold a certain amount of bricks over that we will 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 sell and <laughs> and and sell those out, out off, offer people the opportunity to come come purchase those. And then there's some plaques and stuff that that like that that we'll be pulling off. But that's that's the gist of, yeah. of the what we feel is reusable of the facility. The, a lot of the building, it's we're gonna have to abate asbestos in it yeah. and and other things, and so there's there's not a lot to reuse. Any other questions? Maybe you said this and I just missed it, but best case scenario, if if everything goes real smooth, how long? What do we plan the timeline for construction is? We we planned it twenty one months is is what what we anticipate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Chair, I have a question. Go ahead. Hey, and I noticed on the programming, we didn't have uh, junior jazz or untamed or open gym time for uh, basketball or volleyball. Is there is there a need for additional uh, talks with the school district for more court space for those programs too? Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, we can always use more more gym space with within Ogden, um, but for sure, those those conversations will will happen about opening up more more gym space as we we go along. Okay, thanks. And then Ed, did you want to kind of talk about um, kind of groundbreaking and the kind of the dates that if if everything falls in place, what we'll look to expect. Yeah, so as as we go along, we fully anticipate have having um, an open house if if you know if this is approved, have an open house to to invite the public one last time to go through the center, um, kind of take pictures or, or anything thing like that that they want to before we um, officially close it and and demo it, and then we'll also have a, a groundbreaking ceremony. Um, we'll we'll invite everybody out of and and uh, put some shovels in the ground and and for sure take pictures and have that opportunity. I just wanted to take a moment to say, one, it's April, and we promise to come to you in April. We're not breaking ground in April, but we're pretty close, and we feel very good about that. I wanted to give a personal shout out to the committee. They've been the best committee I think the city's ever had. They've done an amazing job, and uh, I thank them all very, very much. I think that they've done excellent. And our, our staff's worked hard on this to try and pull this together. And Brent's been a delight to work with, sort of, for an old guy. But uh, I think we've got a good product. I think we got better pricing than we thought we were going to get. Um, hopefully we get a little bit lucky. And maybe we can flex the payment a little with term. And that's something we'll investigate with Laura. That maybe we'll term it a little longer and flex the payment down a little bit. Um, BDO lease revenue money, uh, originally, uh, there was no um, restrictions on it. And as a going away present for Mary Hall when she was a council member, they put the 50-50, so 50% 50 of that money had to be spent on infrastructure. That really has never been looked at since 2002, the end of 2002, 2003, when that was put in place. And it probably, um, you can't, bind future councils is the problem. You can put something in, but you don't know that you're going to be able to outlast the other councils, but it might be a good idea to take a look at it and say, you know, we want to preserve some of this money so it's one time so we can continue to do some of the things we've been able to do over the years. There's been a lot of things that we do. A lot of people ask what the secret sauce of Ogden is, and part of that secret sauce is BDO lease revenue money. That's uh, That's been very, very helpful. So anyway, I'm grateful. For, for being at this point. And I credit th some of those people on that back row for that and, and thank them very, very much. And they will be a committee that will continue if you guys will continue to reappoint, re-up them. 
Yeah, I was actually going to bring that up because I noticed that uh, the ordinance or the committee is um, sunsets, and sunsets, yeah. we'll come and we're going to we're going to encourage you to to extend that. Great. So their role might be after the construction of the building. Would it be to help kind of think about the programming? Oh, you know, I think that their about? their roles will mature over time with what they do, and hopefully they're willing to continue to serve. <laughs> it's kind of an exciting time to be part of the committee, in my opinion. That's so. awesome. They'll probably get to wear a helmet and shovel a little dirt and do a few other things. Are we done? Do we need to talk to you about the parking structure. That's the second piece we need to talk sure. to you about. Any other questions about the Marshall White Center phases, timeline, bonding? I just thought it might be nice to start planting the seed of Marshall White North. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For sure. Oh, Ben, did you have something to say? Council Member Nadalski? Nope, I'm good. Sorry, thanks. Okay. Oh, no problem at all. I can't see the Henry, so <laughs> just shout it out if you have anything. Welcome. Would you mind introducing yourself for the people online? No problem. Um, I'm Monica Cap. I'm the Fleet and Facilities Manager uh, with the Management Services here at Ogden City. And my purpose here tonight is to speak about the uh, improvements that we need to make at the junction parking structure. And let's see. Um, I'm going to have you take a step back to 2020 because it's our favorite year by far. Uh, we, we hired BHB Engineering. Uh, they're a structural engineer to do a comprehensive study on both of the structures. And um, they provided us um, recommendations for repairs. And at that point in time, those repairs were estimated to be $2,098,000. Uh, these are some pictures from that study. And basically the way that they did this study is they created a grid for these structures. And uh, they would take a picture and they pinpoint where this issue is on the grid. And then they let us know what level of deterioration is happening there and what needs to be done to fix it. And so uh, you can see that there's quite a bit of, oh, I should go back to this one. Uh, the third picture there with the yellow steel beam, that's a repair that we did a few years before this. And their recommendation, a different engineering firm recommended that we just erect a steel beam. And so that's what that is. That is not, uh, you won't see that anywhere else in the, in the structures. But there is quite a bit of deterioration. And uh, the picture on the right here, I'll, I'll touch on that in a minute. That's an expansion joint on the, on the top deck of the, of the south structure. And I'll go into that. Uh, so in 2020, uh, we got some funding and we did some repairs. Unfortunately, the ramp, which was the newest part of the structures, had deteriorated the most because of the design of it. Uh, so we had to go in and um, fix the ramp and the columns on the ramp. And we also did some waterproofing, which is this diagram in the middle of, of how they installed flashing. Uh, they installed flashing around the elevator and stairwell enclosures on the top decks because we had a lot of water coming down those um, enclosures and then they were going, it was going into our electrical rooms it was degrading the, the um, everything below that. So all of the beams. Um, and then we also repaired a set of stairs there um, that were pretty bad. This is what the junction, look, the ramp looked like while we were doing the repairs. And they had to take it all the way down to the rebar. And um, you can't see it in this picture, uh, the bigger picture here of the ramp, but there were parts of it that they had to go all the way through to the bottom because the concrete had degraded so much. This next picture shows when the ramp was complete. And if you've been over there, it still looks amazing. They did a fabulous job. So this year, we, we, we now in 2023, would like to continue with the repairs that were recommended by BHB Engineering. Uh, for the North structure, uh, the most critical repairs come to a cost of $775,000. Uh, 
and $814,000 for the south structure. On the south structure, I'm not sure if I can show you if that shows up, maybe not. Uh, the expansion joint is the line, okay, it's, is the line that kind of splits that south structure into two rectangles. And it holds those two, okay, right here, right here, this is that expansion joint. And it is deteriorating quite a bit. And so we need to fix that. And then right under here, and this is a ramp right here that you drive down to the third level. There's a, a huge trench drain there that actually doesn't drain. It just drips underneath it down to the next level. And that's causing a lot of the degradation. Um, with the anticipated increases uh, in costs for materials, especially aggregate, um, to do these types of repairs. The remaining repairs that we won't fix in 2023 will probably be at least another million dollars. And um, those repairs though are not as critical. They can be phased over multiple years and we could come up with a plan for how much we wanted to fund that with over the next few years. And that is the status of our parking structures. Does anybody have any questions? Any questions? Okay, I'm gonna to try to ask my question. <laughs> so from the parking garages that we are building, um, are, will that reduce then the cost of those bonds by two whatever million dollars or is this an additional so the two million dollars that we're proposing to increase that 17 million dollar Marshall White bond, we'd increase it by another two million dollars. So we'd bond for 19 million. That was in the parameters resolution. Right. We accounted for that. Um, with the parking plan and the parking structures, we do eventually want to transfer the operation and maintenance of these parking structures to that parking network. But these repairs were needed right away. So we felt like it was a, more of a, an emergency to get these repairs funded. I guess what I'm asking is it's not baked in. It's not, it, we won't be double paying then or we will? No, okay. no, no. The, the bonding that we've talked about in connection with the wonder block on the parking mm -hmm. is specifically for parking structures at the wonder block and, and the equipment that will go on the street. Is it me? Mm -hmm. So we're proposing to add two million to the bond, and I know it's two million, but have we? I, I again thinking of this about buying a car. So if I have a, if I have a car and it needs a new something, and I go and put that onto the loan, I end up paying for let's say I put new tires on it, and I it's not a but I paid for those tires over so many years the length of that loan. I just, I'm having a hard time understanding the value of, of increasing, of paying for $2 million over 30 years. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, hmm? yeah, I just think, I mean, we, I, I guess my question is, have we, there's not, there's not an option to find $2 million? Uh, well, it would be, uh, if council directs us, we can certainly go look for ways to do that. Um, as far as BDO lease revenue, uh, there is currently not $2 million with, with what's program mm -hmm. for fiscal year 24 and what has been used mm -hmm. in that source of funding. Um, we do have fund balance. However, we've set a, a goal of having a 20% um, rainy day fund. Uh, but we could certainly evaluate the cost of the interest on the twenty million, the two million, and make a, an educated decision on which way to go. If that's okay. your direction, I was also thinking about maybe I'm wrong in my thinking. Obviously, I probably am because that's not what you're proposing. Um, but we already have five million set aside for Marshall White. I mean, I'm just thinking kind of similarly. Can we that's take two million of that and pay for it? I don't know. And then we're going to set aside another million. I don't know. But does that make sense? <laughs> It it does. We have that money just sitting there. I, I'm 
I'm kind of thinking this feels a little bit like a capital improvement project. It's going to extend the life of yeah. the pro of the towers. We really can't bond for operating maintenance. So it has to qualify as a capital project to do that. And the idea was that the life of the towers could be extended with these improvements. And the structural engineers went and looked at it and made sure it was sound. And if we do these things, it will help those stay, stay sound. Do you have an estimate on yes, years? Yes, 15 to 20 years it will be viable if we do these repairs. Hmm. The longer we wait, though, the, hmm. the worse. You, you've, the... you've sold me on that we need to do that. That's, yeah. that's <laughs> not, that, that's not where I'm yes. at. I, yeah, I, I, so. I just I just kind of wonder since it kind of feels like a capital improvement mm -hmm. project that maybe we do some moving things around and reprioritizing and it so just the that term way. of this will not be the same as the Marshall White and it, the source of repayment is different than the Marshall White and so what we're trying to do is we're trying to take advantage of the fact that we're going to have this company on site these problems are significant. Uh, if you've been on the third floor of the north parking structure, you might have had concrete fall on your car. It's to that stage because these seams have got to be fixed. So we're we're thinking we're just teaming up this bond with another bond to save some of the the uh, fees and whatnot that we have for Lars Group, legal, et cetera. But we're going to do these bonds a lot shorter period of time, and they're going to be paid for out of the uh, current out, RDA. The current RDA, and uh, the current RDA does expire in 2027. But looking at cash flow, uh, we do think that we could cover all of the debt through the, the RDA. Mm -hmm. oh. So we're taking, we're doing a short-term bond, which usually you don't do. But because we're combining it with a, a, a separate second bond, we think it makes it more manageable price-wise to do it and and keeps the RDA paying for this because the RDA owns the parking structures, not the city. So there's just one parameters resolution though. So how does that work with two different? <laughs> Come on around. Um, so we have the ability in the municipal bond world, and when you walk in to get a car loan or a mortgage, they say, and you want fixed rate, it's okay, principal, here's your interest rate, here's your payment, they're leveled at service, the end, and you go home. <clears throat> um, in the municipal bond world, we have the ability to structure it to meet your cash flow availability. So <clears throat> if you want to think back on uh, we did some water and sewer and storm sewer bonds years ago. And to the bondholders, they were water, sewer, and storm sewer bonds. And there is one debt service schedule, and they get paid, and they're happy. <clears throat> However, for your um, cash flow and budgetary needs, we broke those out project by project by project so that you can see what's attributable to water, what's attributable to storm sewer, what's attributable to sewer. So similarly, if you, you know, if, if it's determined that, okay, the money we have available in the budget is, you know, to pay for this $2 million is I'm just picking, I, this has not been discussed. So I'm just picking a number for an example is $750,000. Then, then I will structure that piece of debt, so to speak, as if it's $750,000 for three or four years by the time you pay for the interest cost, right? And then we effectively layer on top of it the million and a half. So this is a, a good place for me to correct my million seven I stated a minute ago. We will layer on top of it the roughly million and a half for the Marshall White Center. So that in combination, what the bondholders will see <clears throat> is higher payments in the short term while you're paying off the parking structure piece and lower payments after that has been paid off so that you're not paying two million, you know, interest on 2 million for 30 years. Okay, well, that wasn't mine because I have alarm. I'm like, oh, that sounds like my alarm. <laughs> That's okay. It's very okay. pleasant. What, I mean, that's the most pleasant thing I've ever heard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from anyone?
Yeah, that makes more sense to me. I'm so glad you brought that up because I was kind of thinking that too. I was like, well, we got two million in the bank, don't we? I mean, come on. <clears throat> okay, what are the next steps? Any? If there's no other questions, we have this on the agenda for next Tuesday, right? To set the public hearing and. Yeah. So this, we've done the bonds a couple of different ways. In some cases where you wanted to have public input before you adopt the parameters resolution, we have done that where we set the public hearing and don't adopt the parameters resolution and tell the public after the public hearing. That does change the timeline though. And so because this is a tight timeline um, and it's always been bond council's recommendation and preference that you adopt the resolution which also sets the public hearing. So at the public hearing, there wouldn't, you take the input, but there wouldn't necessarily be any additional action at that point. So the recommendation is to adopt the resolution on May 2nd, which also sets the public hearing for May 23rd um, and take input then. Does everybody feel okay with that? Ken, I felt that we were all Pretty supportive and wanted to move this as fast as we could so that's why we said that was good oh oh yeah ben if you have a comment please i'm still in good shape thanks so okay sorry <laughs> your little yellow sorry, hand is up so there we go we're gonna oh, it is? For you. yeah there you okay. go <laughs> thanks Didn't mean to be. oh no no worries at all great well Anything else we need to talk about? Please. And I just want to thank the council, uh, the Marshall White Advisory Committee too for attending and for all of your hard work. Thank you. And the staff, of course. Go ahead, Janine, sorry. Um, so we are, Mavis is uh, frantically working on tickets for the rodeo, so we're working with Jay on that, but we also uh, have um, tickets that will be coming for uh, the Twilight concerts, and so they're providing four general admission tickets for each um, event. If you want VIP tickets, you can get two of those, but you have to work directly with Ashley to get those, so I'll provide that information to you. So if, you know, those, if you're not interested in the general admission tickets or those somehow go unused, we'll probably either staff will take them or we'll just give them back to the, to the events committee. So just wanted to let you know that that's coming. So if there's, you know, if you're dying to see one of the, respond fast. those that things, email. yeah. <laughs> now Beck is the one I want to get to. That's all I had. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you all so much. I think we can adjourn. Awesome. Thanks for coming on an extra Tuesday for this wonderful project. I'm so excited.